so today in this class we'll be discussing the management of septic shock let us first discuss the concept behind it on how to manage septic shock right the mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance and what happens in septic shock the svr goes down so it's basically a vasodilatory shock a vasoplegic shock or popularly known as distributive shock right the pathology of septic shock is such that there is widespread vasodilatation throughout the body which causes the svs to goes down and the mean atrial pressure goes down the perfusion decreases and there is shock this is the normal caliber of a vessel right what happens in septic shock two things happen the caliber of the blood vessel widened so it becomes a broader blood vessel this is called vasodilated state and at the same time they become leaky widened blood vessel and this is leaky blood vessel due to different cytokines and other inflammatory mediators the blood vessel become widened that is vasodilatation at the same time it become leaky so there is extravasation of its intravascular fluid to outside producing interstitial edema so because it is widened now it causes the non stressed volume to increase what is non stressed volume so this is the blood vessel the blood vessel is in a tonically contracted state because of the vascular sooth muscle so it contains two types of fluid inside one is called stressed volume one is called unstressed volume stressed volume means the volume that is under pressure that means this is the volume that will go to heart and this is the volume which remains in the blood vessel so more we have the stressed volume the more is the good for us right and the stress volume determines the mean capillary filling pressure we we'll discussed this mean capillary filling pressure minus the cvp so that difference actually decides the cardiac output when the blood vessel dilates the tonically contracted state gone so the volume that is under pressure now become the volume that is not under pressure so it changes to unstressed volume and the unstressed volume do not go to the heart so when the non stress volume or the unstressed volume increases that will cause the venous return to decrease with the stress volume that determines the mean capillary filling pressure and the difference from cvp determines the venous return if it is getting too much for you in this class we will discuss in detail in our hemodynamic master classes but for today just remember that when the vessel is dilated when the smooth muscle contraction is gone the majority of the stressed volume now become unstressed right so that will cause the decrease in venous return and decrease in stroke volume or cardiac output which leads to decrease perfusion and because it is leaky also so there will be leakage of the intravascular fluid in extravascular space so there will be interstitial edema and the leak itself will increase the non stress volume and this interstitial edema it will cause tissue edema and tissue edema at different place will cause different manifestation in the kidney it will cause aki in the liver liver dysfunction so whenever there is tissue edema remember that the tissues normal function will be hampered in the gut gut congestion ileus there will be platelet will be decreased thrombocytopenia ultramental status all these thing will be there these are the manifestations of septic shock right and at the same time they will decrease the venous return which will decrease the perfusion and this perfusion will compound all these things all the organ dysfunction you can see that how it is a very complex syndromic phenomenon septic shock so now based on this diagram let's try to understand the management of septic shock right from the discussion we've seen number one concept is repair of the leaky capillary so the leaky capillary means this is a disease process so we have to halt the progression of the disease so that is in our case is infection 
so treatment of infection so it will have two components one is iv antibiotics the must for these patients and second is source control if you find a source there is a central line lying inside there is a chemo port or there is cholecystitis there is pyelonephritis all these things you have to look for in the patient and you find a source controlling the source is paramount of importance in our case of course you have to start antibiotic as soon as possible so this will take care of the leaky capillaries because as soon as you treat the source treat the infection the pathology will side right and second concept is we have seen here the non stress volume increases that means the stress volume decreases so we have to increase the stress volume so how do that pathophysiology says that the vessel has become broadened so this is a relative hypovolemia this is a functional hypovolemia for example this is a blood vessel and inside it we have blood right like this this is the thickness now if the blood vessel become widened like this what will happen the fluid remains the same but because the container size increases it will decrease right so this functional hypovolemia this must remain empty and this is the stress volume and you see the how the unstressed volume is increased and stress volume is decreased so this is a functional hypovolemia there is no acute hypovolemia like in hemorrhagic shock so our purpose will be to fill up the container to give fluids if we can give fluids here from outside we pour fluid to in the stress volume we have to give first is iv fluid this is one way and another way is what we could do we can constrict the vessels to again become like this we can use vasopressors to so constrict it right the second line will be vasopressors right hard concept in treatment will be organ support we can see here that there are different organ dysfunctions present so we have to support organ support means we have to prevent progression of organ failure right number four concept is associated for example many of the sepsis patient even if give iv fluid or vasopressors the vessel they remain resistance to the catecholamine so the sepsis uh, the responsiveness to catecholamine goes away in some patient so there there is role of iv hydrocortisone other therapies like when give thiamine vitamin c we can give ulinastatin we can give crrt with cytosol these are the different things you can try in a septic patient so the majority of our treatment because it is a leaky vessel we have to halt the progress of the disease by giving iv antibiotics and source control the stress volume can be increased by increasing the iv fluid and in giving vasopressors and we have to support all the organs here and associated treatment iv hydrocortisone and other experimental methods are there so in our next class we will discuss about in detail regarding this fast two process it's very very important and this is the major treatment guidelines in septic shock right so see you in the next class